mentoring is explicit. What are your career goals? Produce content and material. I'm the best. Hello, I'm welcoming you in Smartbird Talks, where we're discussing exciting and trending topics with software testing experts. And today we will talk about one of the most important aspects in software testing that can help you build your career or change your life significantly. We will talk about mentoring in software testing what mentoring is, how to find a good mentor, how to become a mentor. We will try to cover all of these questions with the world-known software testing experts, Andrew Knight, also known as Automation Panda. So, hi, Andrew. How are you today? Oh, well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, guys, if you do not follow Andrew's blog, it's the right time to subscribe to it because it's so great. You can find all the contact information right under this video. Uh, so today, let's talk about mentoring. Uh, let's start with a short definition because I feel that sometimes people use, uh, people have different views on what mentoring is, and uh, as a result, they may get not the expected results. So. Could you please explain us what mentoring is? Sure. I mean, mentoring is <clears throat> what I would call a one-to-one -one relationship in which someone who has experience guides someone who does not have experience. Um, you can see mentoring in all things from the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts growing up, from like a you know baseball or softball coach or whatever sport you play, and it goes all the way up to adulthood when you're in any sort of professional job. And that could be software testing, software development, or even a completely different industry. Uh, some of the distinctives I say that make mentoring mentoring versus something else would be, first of all, uh, mentoring is explicit. Uh, there are two people who formally agree to have that mentoring relationship. Uh, it's not like you get surprise mentoring or something. It's something that is intentional in that both individuals want to participate. And it is meant to be something rather long-term. It, it's not just helping somebody as a one-off gesture, but rather there's this, this relationship that continues forward. Mm -hmm. um, there's, it, it is purposeful in that the relationship has clear goals or development objectives, right? And that could be something like, learn how to be a better software tester, learn how to ramp up with test automation, um, learn how to even uh, use a programming language, perhaps, and to, to know when certain constructs are, are better than others. And also, I would say uh, a mentoring relationship is meaningful, right? It, growth doesn't just happen for the mentee, but it also happens for the mentor. And um, you should be able to walk away from a mentoring relationship feeling very, very rewarded in either role. How would you define or maybe separate your manager, your boss, how you work with them, how he, they, they give you the direction with this guy who help you in your like strategic life? Mm. Mm, that's a great question. Um, I think there is a separation between um, like a manager type lead and a tech lead, right? Typically in companies and teams I work for, the manager is more in charge of business and peopling, right? They, they may or may not have the technical skills. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They may program, they may not. Um, but uh, I see a manager as someone who's going to be more mentoring you in the sense of, like, what are your career goals? Where do you see yourself in three to five years? Um, what can we do to help um, draw the best out of the skills that you have and apply them somewhere in um, the team or the business? Uh, whereas your more technical lead is going to be mentoring you in the technical kinds of stuff. Uh, what technology should you and should you not use? Um, how do you get better as a developer or as a tester? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what are the up and coming skills or um, tools and frameworks and languages that one ought to know for success? Um, how do you navigate difficult situations, <laughs> right? Wait, what if you have a technical disagreement with somebody? How do you navigate that? So those are kinds of things where I see a bit of separation. Both, both can serve as mentors, uh -huh. um, but you're going to be getting different types of value out of them. Yeah, definitely. 
Definitely. And uh, if we're talking about mentors, so what, uh, uh, what, what testers, what software, what engineers in software testing may expect? Uh, will it be uh, the mentor will provide them like a growth plan? Uh, mm. Sure, absolutely. So I, I like that you said the, the word growth plan. That's something that I, <laughs> I like to use whenever I mentor people. And that can apply to software testing uh, as well as like I said, any, any other kind of role. <clears throat> Typically, when, when I would mentor, say, a software tester, uh, first of all, we would have that sort of agreement to say, okay, you know, however we enter this mentoring relationship, whether it's somebody comes to me, whether it's I go to them, whether it's a manager puts us together, you know, we formalize it, we make it official, we make it explicit to say, hey, this, this, is, what, this is who we are now, this is what we're doing, Let's set out the goals for what we're trying to learn. And I found within software testing, there can be, uh, there can be multiple goals, right? And so I like, to, um, I like to define explicitly what those goals are for that particular uh, mentee, because like, it, in a lot of development roles, it's kind of like, okay, well, I want to become a stronger developer. I'm a junior developer and I know Java or I know JavaScript, but I don't really know how to build a web app or a REST API. Okay, we can chase those down. But when it comes to testing, you have, you have many different kinds of roles, even within testing, right? You say someone's a software tester. It's like, okay, well, that's still an umbrella term. Are you looking to be an automation engineer? Are you looking to be um, a more of a holistic tester who kind of comes in and mostly does manual, maybe uses some, some codeless tools to do automation, maybe works with an automation engineer to um, where they develop the tests and then they hand off to the automation engineer to write the scripts. Um, or it could be, or is this a performance mm -hmm. uh, tester type person? So there's all kinds maybe. of things. So I like to you know, define, okay, what exactly are we narrowing in on for the mentorship? And once we have that, then you use the magic word, growth plan or development plan. Um, I like the word growth plan because it, it implies that, that long, long-term growth. Um, then, then I'll set up with them um, what this growth plan is. And it could include things like one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions where we talk about certain topics. Uh, for example, I've had one-on-one -on -one sessions about uh, the software testing pyramid. I've had one-on-one -on -one discussions about uh, layers to your test automation architecture one-on-one -on -one sessions about, okay, here's, here are the big players in the industry in the software testing space. Here's why you need to be aware of them and know them and kind of be familiar a little bit with their products, right? Those kinds of things that like you, you can look up with Google or wiki pages or some sort of documentation, but it, it really helps as the mentor to give that type of explanation one-on-one. -on -one. So you can, you can provide context and you can provide experience. Yeah. Um, other types of things that are, can be part of the growth plan, things like um, sending articles and reading assignments, um, uh, uh, giving online courses so that somebody can go off on their own, spend time and kind of learn through a course. For example, Test Automation University is a great example. Um, and then also things like pair programming, code reviews, and also giving them real work assignments and then letting them stumble through it on their own and hopefully win. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, just, uh, so get, get, given like detailed industry information with some mm -hmm. context uh, where to pay attention to, uh, how other uses this, mm -hmm. how other companies or other people uses this or that. So yeah, that, that makes sense because at the moment, uh, even on the in, in the internet, so you mm -hmm. can find huge of the information, and mm -hmm. in order to find some, you know, the the one that you need, uh, it's uh, very critical at the moment. And mm -hmm. if you can save the time uh, mm -hmm. to find the information, uh, because mentor a mentor gives it to you, so that's that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, yeah. Okay, and. Uh, I, th I think the entire Smart Bay community is asking the questions, where to find a mentor? Where do you find a mentor? Oh, that's, that's a toughie. Um, I, I would say a lot of my mentor-mentoree relationships have been rather fortuitous 
they just kind of happen. They've, you know, somebody joins the team as a junior engineer and it just so happens to be, I'm the one that's there for them. You know, for, for people who are looking for a mentor, um, some advice I would give, first of all, um, be open and explicit about your desires, right? This is something that you should be telling your manager first and foremost, um, possibly your tech lead. Um, because those are the people in, in place who should be advocating for you and helping you find that, right? Um, second, I would say be patient. You don't wanna force a mentoring relationship to happen. Excuse me, because not every single senior level person or manager level person is going to be a good manager. And that's, that's the unfortunate state of the world, right? We want everybody to be perfect and good and spectacular, but that doesn't always happen. So I would say, wait, wait for a good mentor. <laughs> don't, don't, don't settle for a bad one because that could lead to, to bad things. Um, and if I would say, try to find a mentor inside of your current team or organization or company before you try to find one on the outside. Mm -hmm. And the reason I would say that is because typically when it comes to software testing and software development, um, those inside your company or your team or your organization are going to have a much better pulse on what you as an individual contributor are doing and trying to do. And within those, those company walls, um, there's more leeway and more time and more availability for a mentor to help you. Mm -hmm. right? it, it might even be written into their, um, you know, their, their yearly goals, right? You know, okay, well your job is to help mentor such and such a person. Right. And so then they have to, you know, it's, there's, there's less resistance. It's, it's easier for them to help you. You're going to have more access to them and they're, they're going to be able to know more critically exactly what you're doing and what you're trying to do. Um, now, if, if you can't find somebody inside your company, because maybe it's too small, maybe it's too toxic, I, whatever the situation is, you can still find somebody outside, right? And if you want to take that route, then I would say look to the um, software and testing communities, right? Um, things like Test Automation University or um, the, the like Ministry of Testing runs really good communities. And I know companies like Smart Bear as well, they have their own community initiatives as well. That would be a good place to start networking. Um, you know, find some people you trust, um, talk, ask around like, hey, you know, I'm on this journey and I wanna get better. Who can I talk to? Who can I network with? And possibly out of that, you might be able to find somebody who would say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'd be more than happy to, to come alongside you and you know, help you mentor you, guide you where you want to go. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. At the moment, the, the world is so open. Uh, mm -hmm. Even right now, when you ask people in the internet, in the community, in the smart Bay community or in any other forums, uh, if you ask, usually people answer. So, mm -hmm do not be afraid to ask because this is like the first step uh, to learn the new stuff, uh, mm -hmm. to learn the new friends. Uh, so just, we also will cover the situation when a person has, uh, has um, a knowledge and uh, they're ready to share his knowledge with uh, others. So they're ready to become a mentor. So how will it be better to, announce it or what mm -hmm. how 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 it how it work um, the biggest piece of advice i would say there is be humble um there's there's a a fine line between saying okay i'm here to help whoever needs help i'm open to having a mentoring relationship you know just come to me whatever and blasting it out there saying I'm the best, I'm number one, I know everything and you don't, and I'm gonna show you whether you want it or... <laughs> you, you don't wanna be the latter case, right? Okay. Because I hate to say this, within the tech industry, there's a lot of arrogant um, arrogant people. And we don't, I don't know about anybody, 
I typically don't like to work with arrogant people because they, they rub me the wrong way, right? They, they act like know-it-alls, they condescend to other people, they tear other people down rather than build them up. And so when you gotta be careful because if you, if you don't come across as a humble person, people will probably judge you as being an arrogant person, right? And, and that's going to nullify any type of value you can, you can bring to the table as a mentor. So um, ways that somebody can get started with mentorship uh, or with becoming a mentor, I would say, first of all, start, start to um, produce content and material. That's, that's an easy way to start because it's, it's kind of like um, the, I wouldn't say a prerequisite, but kind of like a preparation step. Right? You write a blog, um, write articles on other people's blogs, uh, maybe speak at some conferences, uh, mm-hmm. run some uh, like, uh, tutoring sessions or whatever, you know, get involved in your local community somewhere. Those kinds of small steps can really help prepare. And that, that also kind of puts your yourself out there because now like, okay, people can refer to the things that you've developed. So people know what your expertise is. For example, my blog, Automation Panda, I write a lot about software development, testing and automation. That's, that's my niche. And so long before, you know, I would even have been invited to a, a, a video talk like this, right? I was just, I was just writing blog articles and it was primarily for me to record notes to myself, you know? So the, starting to develop that content, put yourself out there in some, some um, semi-public place can be a, a first good step. Uh, another good step could be like within, within your place of work, going to your manager and your technical lead and having the conversation about uh, where you, what are your goals for the next couple years be like, Hey, you know, I've, I feel like I've learned a lot in the past and I'd like to explore the possibility of maybe being a mentor for somebody. Um, And then that, then your manager can say, Oh, okay, cool. And they'll lodge that in the back of their mind because maybe they've had a separate one-on-one with a, a more junior level person who said they're looking for a mentor themselves. And so then the manager can say, boop, boop, here you go. Yeah. Right. And that's, that, that's a great way to have it set up. It's kind of like matchmaking, right? <laughs> you know, because it's, it's not this awkward situation where you're out there saying, I want to be a mentor. Somebody come be my mentee. Right. It's none of that. It's, it's more of like, okay, so we find a need, fill a need. Boom. You know? So those kinds of strategies can really help. Okay. So uh, that, that's great. So contribute more, create more content mm-hmm. and uh, say out loud, at least uh, not, not say, uh, I have to say, not not to say out loud. I mean, do not put the uh, like desk <laughs> in front of you. I I want yeah, to yeah, become yeah. a mentor, but uh, show that uh, you have knowledge and mm-hmm. you are ready to talk uh, about the industry, about software testing. Uh, you mm-hmm. have your own opinion and uh, yes. you are ready to share it uh, with others. Yep. And if I can add on one thing to what you said there, because that's great. Um, The more expertise and content you just naturally show, the more potential mentees will gravitate towards you, right? I mean, people will come out of the blue, (laughs) right? Sometimes they'll be like, they will, if they recognize you as a a leader and an expert, um, and not necessarily like the top level, but just like that you have leadership or that you have some expertise in something, people will gravitate towards you. And so it, if you're doing that kind of thing, the opportunities will arise. So just be patient. <laughs> okay, but so if, if you want, but if you have the knowledge and you mm-hmm. have great skills in software testing, I believe that each of the skilled user should become a mentor because uh, this is a great, great opportunity for young mm. people uh, mm. to learn from expertise, from, from, from skilled users. Indeed. Indeed. I agree. Totally. Okay. Thank you so much. That was very interesting. That was a very great conversation. Uh, thanks a lot, Andrew, for your willingness and time to share your knowledge with the Smart Bay community. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been an honor. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.